Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. You get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend D.G. Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This Thatter the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Hi, this is Jeff Johnson. You are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. In brightest day. In blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome back to Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast. I am Phil. Joining me, making his triumphant return, it is the master of the core. (laughs) Hello, everyone. I am Will, and I'm back. Sorry I missed last week, man. <laughs> back. I mean, no, you were on, I know you were under the weather. <clears throat> hey, like I said, Lilith, I told Lilith, she owes you several, because you, you covered last September, you're going to cover this coming <laughs> September, so she would have done it anyway. She's nice enough that she would have done it anyway, but I'm like, you owe him a few. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm going to... I. Uh... I haven't watched the episode yet. I think you said it's going to drop this Friday, so I'm looking forward to watching it. Well, it's on YouTube now, but yes, it will hit the podcast Friday. So, oh, gotcha. I guess I can send you the link. Yeah. It's... So, so you said you did read it. So, do you want do you want to give your thoughts on collateral damage? Oh, <laughs> which we covered last episode. Nah, didn't enjoy it at all. I mean, it that was like Guy Gardner turned up to eleven. The Guy Gardner from like the Guy Gardner series before Guy Gardner Reborn. It was, just, it was not yeah. the Guy Gardner we, we've known since Emerald Twilight and since, you know, uh, Rebirth. So uh, That's what I said. It, it's like he it it didn't he, he didn't seem like the guy we're going to get here soon in like, you know, rechar- Green Lantern Recharge, which I believe we're doing next week. But, uh, you know, yeah. and, and the stuff that's coming up, it almost seemed like, you know, yeah, you, you plucked at 90s Guy Gardner and be like, oh, yeah, he's got to ring again. Yeah. And, and was there killing? I, because it looked like he was killing those guys or they, they died, but I don't know if he killed them. I... And it looked like <laughs> it. And I was like, and why did we give Gnort an AI uh, intelligence upgrade? I'm like, I'm like, this isn't our dumb Gnort. <laughs> I know it's, yeah, it, it was more seemed out of character to me, and yeah, no, it's... and just even the Guardians were out of character too. I mean, it it just didn't seem. It's almost like an Elseworlds, you know? It, maybe that happened in another universe, right? <laughs> maybe. And even, like, Lilith, who seemed to like it better, was like, well, why did they do this? It was just, like, what, like, 248-page, uh, was it prestige format or whatever it is? But, yeah, like, 248-page. Yeah. She's like, she like, well, why did they do this? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, Howard Jenkins, uh, you know, a longtime, you know, artist and writer and... I don't, I, just, I don't know. I, I just didn't feel it. It didn't feel like Green Lantern. And I think part of that was from the art. You know, he's a good, he's a yeah. great artist, but it just didn't seem to mesh with what Green Lantern had become at that point or what, what I think Green Lantern is at yeah. this point. So, what it was at the time. Yeah. 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 Yep. So yeah, I uh, tell little thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And well, that's what I told her. I said, no matter what, I said, at least if he's going to miss, he's going to miss in a, uh, a week that's not how Jordan. So, I, got, I did not plan that, but you know, it worked out, right? Yes. <laughs> the universe worked that out perfectly. Oh, but I did send you the picture. Okay. Well, one, I was mad because I walked in the comic shop this week. There was some kind of mix up with the shipment, or I don't know if there's some kind of tr- truck accident or what, but I got no Marvel books this week. So I was PO'd. Uh, no, okay. <laughs> but you got your DC books. I did get my DC books, including uh, Unstoppable Doom Patrol number three. I that. hopefully that's. I think that's in my box. I, at least I hope it is. So we'll see. <laughs> yes, because it is. Yes, because as we as I just showed on the screen, yes, uh, Cal Rayner and Guy Gardner appear in this issue. I, have you had a chance to read? It? Yes, yes, I did read it. It is good because it. They're basically just awesome. like they're chasing this. Uh, Basically, a Starro, like uh, one of the little Starros, has attached itself to, su- to some <laughs> guy, 
And it's like, but it star is not in full control. It's basically like a new life form. It's not the guy. It's not full star. It's like a mix of the two. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. <laughs> so the Doom Patrol are trying to protect them. And the, you know, Kyle and guy are just like, no, no, no. We, we're in orders. We got to take them to O and stuff. And no, it's, it's pretty interesting and it's pretty humorous because, uh, because as you see in the beginning, yeah, we see it there like in Reno and, uh, <laughs> guys, guys, basically like guys, basically like f the Doom Patrol are making us chase them and stuff. And uh, Kyle's like, yeah, I don't know what they're doing lately. He's like, because uh, he's talking about stuff that happened in issue one. He's like, yeah, Wally told me that you know they went into Gotham without like Batman's permission and stuff. And uh, you know they were uh, they were doing stuff in Gotham without Batman's per- permission. And then all of a sudden, guy, guys like, ah, maybe they're not so bad after all. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, so ba- I, I thought that was very in character. Batman. Watch that is very in character. But when, when does this take place? Watch favorite character. You know what? You know what? I know what you're thinking, and it does. There is a uh, there. What there's an editor's note on the first page that says this ta- this takes place before Green Lantern number one. So. Okay, so it just it's just, so before the Jeremy Adams number one. So. That's all it says. Sometime. It Sometime between, I guess, sometime before or the corn or Lantern number twelve, and and then the Jeremy Adams number one, I guess, right? I would Whatever. assume, yeah, yeah, because it just says before Green Lantern number one, so yeah, so before we, we like, have, Earth goes in the quarantine. Yeah, we did have a year where we didn't have a book, so there you go, right? <laughs> oh yeah, plenty of room. I t- <laughs> <laughs> plenty of room to throw all kinds of stories. <laughs> I guess they weren't brave. I guess they weren't brave enough to tell us where this takes place, you know, in uh, relation to Dark Crisis. But uh, I'll, I'll let it go. <laughs> yeah, we'll let that slide. Because <laughs> even like you know, a lot of the Batman and Superman titles, you know, I swear they they they're like doing like trade collections and like before the the story was before it's like uh, some of these stories were taking place before Dark Crisis. Now it's taking place after Dark Crisis. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they don't even know. Ah, uh, yeah. Continuity, right? Well, man, <laughs> well, you start publishing more and more books, you're going to run into that. Unless you actually, you know, sit down and yeah, like they used think to. about it a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, like the greats used to, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's like I was talking to Ray and Dave on a Spidercast this morning, and uh, Dave was like, oh, he's like, if you can interview, like, any, like, creators who are no longer with us, you know, who are deceased he's like who would you talk to first name off the tip of my tongue i was like grunwald yep <laughs> yep i'm always like uh grunwald then i was like ah maybe stan, stan lee but i was like grunwald grunwald grunwald, grunwald. definitely grunwald <laughs> oh yeah because uh justin and i have been doing some uh we're, we're covering all the evolutionary war uh annuals oh, from annuals. yeah yeah and the backup is like the origin of the high evolutionary uh-huh and like there's a mysterious figure who like you know gives him like info like towards the beginning of his career but you know before the purple armor and all that mm-hmm. and like they never like nay they never i guess they never come out and say who it is because there's all people who have been uh debating this for decades it's like oh is it mr sinister is it uh oh, what's the guy's name it's like fader or something who's like part of the inhumans uh genetics council oh. or something oh yeah mm-hmm. and i'm just saying but like these backups the origin of the high evolutionary i mean they're really good because like they name drop at least one mm-hmm. known marvel name each time it was written by grunwald and i'm like well if it wasn't answered it's, it might never be answered because grunwald was the one writing it exactly and i have to ask you one question there is one of those annuals are you going to do it? Oh, uh, I'm, I don't know. We were been debating. I, I even said, I'm like, oh, we should do the elf annual. Yes, I know which one you're talking. Yes, but <laughs> I, have to go, I have to go hunting for that because, oh, man, I used to have that as a kid. I don't know if I still have that in store. It's got the, not. It's got the trade dress and everything. Evolutionary yes, war crossover. <laughs> I'm going to have to, I'm, I mean, I'm either going to have to try to buy it again because, it's not, of course, it's not on the Marvel app. But it's, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm either going to have to see if I have it in storage because I, like, again, if, 88 yeah i had it as a 10 year old kid i don't know if i still have it anywhere or not <laughs> alf got alf. an evolutionary war annual cross that's so awesome <laughs> i know hey man everyone who had a marvel book pretty much I that never... you know what no that is not true because we were saying it's so weird that sorry for, sorry for your dc uh, podcast here kids but it's like evolutionary war we were looking it's like 
there was no Captain America, Iron Man, or Thor annual. There was no Daredevil annual. We're like, man, there's uh, some names missing from. There, I mean, Avengers and West Coast Avengers had annuals, but like, none yeah, because of, of the so, it, solo Avenger books had. Uh, yeah, it was Iron it was kind of weird because. Meanwhile, Spider Man had after, three. Yeah, after after Evolutionary War, did they go to the family annual crossovers after that? No, the next year was Atlantis Attacks, and that's when that's it right, the yeah. list really expanded. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, unless they were just testing the waters with Evolutionary War, because I think that was the first one that was like the whole, you know, because then by Atlantis Attacks, it was it pretty much was everybody. <laughs> Yeah, then after that, they started going to the family books. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like Ghost in the Machine. Um, what was the time? It was a Kang crossover. Oh, with... yeah, yeah. Uh, is it cro- was it cross time something? or? I can't, yeah, I can't remember. But yeah. Because yeah, I... we're going to be doing a few of those too. Because uh, there was uh, one that was a life form. Or it's basically this uh, oh, yeah. creature that keeps mutating. It was like Punisher, Daredevil, Hulk, and Silver Surfer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes they just threw a bunch of books together. <laughs> yeah, just one from here, one from here. Okay, we're good. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was one. Oh, what was it? Oh, the Von Strucker Gambit, because uh, there was at least one or two parts written by our friend Chichester. It was like Punisher, Daredevil, and Captain America. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of those uh, annual crossovers that are just... I have a lot of them. Oh, yeah, sure. late 80s, early 90s. <laughs> Late 80s, early 90s, man. Yeah, they really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, speaking, um, if you, I'll throw out the invitation. If you want to join us uh, in July, Justin and I are going to be doing two episodes on uh, Grunewald Captain America arcs. So. Oh, which arcs? Uh, well, he picked 342 through 344 for some Serpent Society. So I'm like, all right, I'll join it. I'll pick 380 through 382 when they put Diamond back on trial. <laughs> <laughs> More service society stuff. <laughs> well, did you see? Because, like, did you see they announced that uh, Captain America 4? Uh, I guess they might be doing some Serpent Society stuff because supposedly they cast Diamond back. Oh, interesting. Uh huh. Uh huh. Is now, I think I read a rumor, it's probably been discounted, but was Chris Evans potentially coming back at some point? May, I mean, maybe I don't know. They again, they haven't confirmed. I'm sure they're going to try to keep that. Even if it does happen, they're going to try to keep that secret as long as they can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so. It's going to, I guess, officially star Anthony uh, Mackie. South, yeah. yeah, Anthony yeah. Mackie, and I would imagine it probably has the Winter Soldier in it. Potentially, maybe. Yeah, I don't know if they even announced that, but I would, I would assume. Hmm. But it's weird that they would bring in Diamondback without having, you know, Steve Rogers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else, or do you want to? Should we talk some Ron, Ron Thanagar War? <laughs> uh, any any other Green Lantern news? We had the unstoppable uh, Blue Patrol appearance. Yeah. Jack. I don't think so. Uh. I was going to say the Flash movie is coming up, but I don't think there's going to be any Green Lanterns in that. Uh, oh, the fla- Flash finale was this past Wednesday. Oh, how how did it, how'd the series end up? It was decent. I mean, again, I mean, considering what they, you know, they only had 13 episodes this season, it was just what they've been doing the last few seasons. I mean, it's, it wasn't bad. Cool. Yeah, I think the last I watched of it was season two. So oh I, my! I a lot to it. It's been a while. It's yeah. Been a while. <laughs> yes, yes, it ended on season nine. So yes, you have. Yes, yeah. <laughs> have a few seri- a few uh, seasons to catch up on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Lois and Clo- uh, Superman and Lois is still good. So. Yeah, I need to catch up on that too. I haven't. Uh... They're on season three now, right? They just started. Yes, season three. Yeah. Okay. We we didn't haven't watched season two yet, so I need to get on that as well. <laughs> all right. Uh, yes, as I said, it's 1989 all over again. Yes, Michael Keaton is going to be Batman again, and there's an Indiana Jones movie coming out at the end of June. So, <laughs> 1989 all over again. I have such hopes for that, I, because I I I mean, to my core, I love Indy so much. <laughs> and I know, but. Ugh. 
it, it's really I, it's been annoying having to just say that there's only been three films, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I was gonna say but after between Kingdom Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and then it's like Harrison Ford is like, isn't he literally like eighty years old now? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there, you, there you, you go. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. So. Like I said, yeah, we'll t- we'll talk some Ron Thanagar War. I just basically have an overall plot for it. Then we can just like kind of swoop in and talk about details and stuff. But uh, sounds good. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, this is weird. Okay. Uh, yeah, this was yeah, kids. This was a six issue limited series from July. Wait, July through December two thousand five. Uh. And again, there was an Infinite Crisis special, but we'll get to that in an upcoming episode because it th- takes place like in the middle of Infinite Crisis, which we're going yeah, to get here soon. And this is this is a lead up to it. Yes. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. So during Planet Heist, which I didn't read, Adam Strange fought a rogue group of Thanagorians. During the battle, the leader of the group transported Strange's adopted homeworld of Ron into the Thanagorian system in the hope of creating a dictatorship. However, Ron's new location caused the orbit of Thanagar to become unstable and the planet crashed into the system's sun. The surviving Thanagarians and Ronians now all live on Ron, and tensions are high between the two groups as each blames the other for their predicament. Aware that war could erupt at any time, Strange goes to Earth to recruit the help of Hawkman and Hawkgirl, who are from Thanagar, in preventing a war. Meanwhile, Cal Rayner and Captain Comet go to Thanagar to investigate. <laughs> Finding Onamar Sin in engaging in a battle with uh, with Sin, escaping through a drop ship. They then find hundreds of bodies buried underground, supplying Onamar Sin with energy. Where Kilowog shows up later, Kilowog and Rainer terraform Thanagar back to life and save the underground bodies. When Strange and the Hawks arrive on Ron, they are shocked to see that the war has already begun. They form a team, including the Thanagarian Hawkwoman and Tamaranian Blackfire. More and more planets are drawn into the war as Ron and Thanagar each call on their respective allies. Seeing a chance to seize power, Blackfire betrays the group, surprise, killing Hawkwoman in the process. It becomes clear that all factions have a common enemy, Sin. With the help of Tygor of the Omega Men and Captain Comet, Strange's team manages to cut Sin into seven pieces, and each piece is inserted into a separate star to prevent him from reforming. At the end of the series, the assorted forces of Ron and Thanagar are faced with a fracture in space that resembles those that were seen during the Crisis on Infinite Earths. Hmm. <laughs> well, well, I mean, we're, we're going to get to it because we're going to cover some Infinite Crisis here, but uh, late in a few weeks. But I mean, Infinite Crisis is basically them, you know, basically Crisis took away the multiverse, and Infinite Crisis basically brought back the multiverse. Well, a multiverse. I, yeah, not yeah. How many? <laughs> and then there was Final Crisis, which was not final because then we had Dark Crisis, which yes, not so was a direct sequel. So. Not so Final Crisis, yeah. And then there, <laughs> Like Dark Knight's heavy metal basically destroyed the multiverse and then brought it back. And then they were like, oh, there's a bunch of multiverses and a giant omniverse. It's like, uh. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, this is like the, this was like the first like big thing we saw. Well, after Rebirth, this is the first big thing we've seen Colin since that, you know, since the end of his series and Rebirth. So, yeah. And it was interesting. The way Kilowog was talking to him when we first got introduced to him, you know, you're training, blah, 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 yeah. you know, you're assigned now. Uh, it didn't seem like Kyle. It didn't sound like Kyle to me. Yeah, Does no. Like no, like he seems like really, uh, like, like really a core member again. And let's, I mean, you don't want him to be the outsider, but also, too, shouldn't he be the one where, we, Shouldn't they show a little bit of difficulty or at least time passing for him to like get used to transitioning to be like, like a member of the core after he was like the only Green Lantern for how many years? Exactly. I mean, yeah, it just felt weird. But I mean, I did, I did like the fact that they remembered that Kilowog was a geneticist. Yes. And they fix Ranagar. So, and then put it in the right orbit because they're green lanterns, right? 
That's pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, all right. OK, here's the plot point that stuck out to me. I was just like, wait a minute. So because like the Guardians didn't want them to take sides in this war. But you can terraform a planet. I, that was based. This, yeah, this is. It seems like a prime directive thing, but it, it's like it seems, seems like terraforming a planet is, is a big guy. Uh, kind of a big deal. But, you uh, know, yeah. The, the the plot of this was just like headlong action, 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 done. You know, it was just fight after fight after fight. There, were, you know, I it, it just kind of all became noise after a while. You know, who are all these people? You know, we're we're not really getting introduced to them. Who's you know? Oh yeah, Commandar. She's you know the sister of Starfire. I know that because, you know, geek, but how many people picking this up for the first time? Who is she? Who are the warlords of Okara? Who are the com the, the controllers? Who are, you know, who are all, or the dominators? You know, who are all these people? It's just kind of, I mean, it, it, you, there's some text at the beginning, but it's just, I don't know. And I, and I really like Dave Gibbons, I believe, as the writer. Uh, mm -hmm. And the art's nice. It's just, it's, it just seems like kind of a big old mess. <clears throat> Yeah, like I, like I said, I hadn't read the story, per, you know, that preceded this. So I'm like, I, I kind of got the picture. I was like, okay. So they kind of tried to move the one planet. They set it on fire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're at war. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, and I don't even remember the plot of Infinite Crisis. I'm gonna have to reread it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we we are gonna get there, but um, I mean, there were a few things going on in uh, Infinite Crisis, but basically, yeah, well, basically, it's Alexander Luther of Earth three trying to reboot the the multiverse, and you know, Superboy oh, Prime yeah. break punching a wall and breaking out. Yes, Infinite oh, Crisis. Yes, that's yeah. the pun the wall. But that's that caused. Yes, hey, so that many, doesn't make sense. It was Superboy punching the universe. <laughs> so, so many things, including. Uh, Re, uh, resurrecting Jason Todd in his coffin, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh I remember, like, they'd even, re they'd even, like, reveal at first how Jason came back, and everyone's like, oh, Lazarus Pit probably, and they're like, no, 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 it's not that obvious, and we lost Super White Pride punching him all, and everyone's like, okay, that's a better, or, okay, that's better. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, what oh, again, it's like, oh, I the bad characters are so street level and it's like, Oh, how do we bring them back? Oh, this very cosmic thing happened. Exactly. You know, it's, um, I, we're getting to a point that I had kind of forgotten, but you know, there's a certain bloodthirstiness in a lot of these stories for the next several years, you know, Superboy's ripping people's arms off and you know, it's just, it's kind of over the top. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, oh, my God. Yeah, because well, we were talking about that for Nightwing News 200. Uh, one of the 90s Titans, uh, oh, what's his name? Risk. Uh, yeah, the, like, he's the one Superboy Prime rips his arm off, and then he, like, battles Superboy Prime, like, later on, and he rips the other arm. <laughs> that's just not cool. I man. know. That, now that's just repeating yourself. Come on. <laughs> uh but I mean, you know, the Green Lanterns don't have a lot to do in this. They do save, you know, Thanagar and the people on Thanagar, the remaining people on Thanagar. But I don't know. It the ending seems kind of oh, we're just kind of teleporting to seven different places. Okay, we couldn't. Have, why, why didn't we think of that before? You know, why did all these people have to die? And lots of there's lots and lots and lots of people dying, <laughs> you know, across this. <laughs> and then I guess that's the little point of what all these miniseries they put out at the time were, but it's basically like, oh no, it's not even ending here. Go, go check out Infinite Crisis. Something else is popping up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I really like Adam Strange. I've always kind of yeah. liked him because he's, you know, he's he's thinking. He's always thinking. There's that great uh, JLA arc, you know, where he has to convince these telepathic aliens he's insane to save his planet basically mm. which is pretty awesome um mark wade writer on that one yes excellent um but yeah it's 
I don't know. This is just, you know, how can you, you know, how can you have superheroes who, you know, are being superheroes and by superheroes, I mean, you know, whatever they are in DC, right? Have them, you know, get into a war and still not kill because, you know, Mm-hmm. can't have them you can't turn them into murderers during the war and then just go back to being you know the same when they get back to earth and do their whatever their thing is it, yeah this is just very um i don't know it's a weird tone to it and it's just so frenetic you and know? it's and again it's so weird i mean i know that we've done this over and over but it's like the guardians telling the you know the you know kyle and Kilwag not to take sides and stuff and it Mm-hmm. You know, basically just trying to save lives. I'm just like, okay, so we're kind. Of, it's almost like we're doing a prime directive, but at this point, aren't we like really focusing? You know, which isn't even our favorite thing, but it like the, them being like the police force of the universe. So it's like, mm-hmm. are you Starfleet or are you cops? You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> yeah, you can't have it th- ways. And and I I think now who did Jeff Johns write Infinite Crisis? Yes, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Double check here. Uh, I think the problem I have with Guy Gardner collateral damage and the Green Lanterns in this title are that they're not. I, I don't feel like Johns had direct control over those, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's why they don't feel like you know the Jeff Johns Green Lantern stuff that's going on. You know, the for the first five issues that we've we've gone through and the. And the uh, uh, Secret Files and Origins. Oh, yeah. Infinite Crisis number one. I just looked it up. Yes. Jeff Johns, writer. Okay. Somebody's going to lose an arm in that, I bet. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You're not bad-mouthing Jeff Johns, are you? He brought your boy back. (laughs) I, I know, but there's just... Oh, you know why we might be prejudiced against uh, the Ron Thanagar War? Uh, because, oh, wait, hold on. Because uh, it was in other media, elements that were adapted into uh, the movie oh. Green Lantern, Beware My Power. <laughs> Which we did discuss as being not awesome <laughs> for any of the characters involved. <laughs> not even for Jon Stewart, who it was, you know, ostensibly about. But, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Oh wait a minute! I never even read this one. I guess there was there like a follow up in in t- May two thousand eight. Uh, an eight issue limited series entitled Ron Thanagar Holy War began publication. Oh, I don't, I don't think I've read that. I haven't read that either. But it's it said it was written by Starlin and art by Ron Lim. So maybe I maybe I bought it and just didn't read it. I don't know. I'll have to I'll have to look around for that one. Yeah, because it's Ron Lim. I have to look that up because may, maybe we'll hit that because if there's any Green Lanterns in it. But... Yeah. But, you know, I, I thought it was interesting because they used the Green Lanterns, but they kept them pretty much off the board yeah. over at Thanagar. And, you know, they used the rings to, you know, build an atmosphere and then terraform, you know, part, part of a planet that had, you know, been pretty much sterilized because it passed through the corona of the of the sun, right? Mm-hmm. So, and then I believe Kilowog mentioned something about orbital dynamics, about basically pushing it out into a higher orbit. <laughs> yeah. Which is cool. <laughs> and, you know, if you have enough willpower, a green lantern ring should be able to do that, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I mean, I guess with two different writers, you know, it gets you know stuff gets mixed you know but it's like the guardians seem like real like i said once again not to harp on it but the guardians really seem dead set about kyle and Kilowog not picking sides but that green but that guy gardner collateral damage i mean guys basically trying to broker peace and you know <laughs> punching stuff and i'm just like really <laughs> yeah it's yeah i'm kind of a so we start with rebirth and then we get the first five issues, and the and then we kind of drop off. I think a little bit in quality with Guy Gardner and Rand Thanagar. Uh, hopefully, we'll we'll trend back up next week a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if people were just excited because they had a Green Lantern core to play with again, you know. But yeah, but it doesn't seem like it. 
really meshes with you know what we see well we still have green lantern recharge coming up and i think that really establishes yes. the core whereas collateral damage and grand thanagar war are are kind of side stories whereas mm -hmm. recharge reestablishes the core and then we have an ongoing core book after that which is really great oh yeah that's what I'm saying. Like the guy Gardner we got in collateral damage was is not the guy Gardner we're about to get here. No. And he get, he gets to go through a lot of character growth. I mean, he you know, as a Red Lantern for a while, you know, we're talking, you know, New 52 stuff going down, where he actually leads the Red Lanterns for several issues with, with Supergirl as a Red Lantern. Oh yeah. Oh I like I said, I just got discovered that not too long ago. Like I didn't read a bunch of that, but yeah, I, really, I haven't. I haven't. I've I've read about it, but I've not read it. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, some of the early ones, like when he teams with Simon and stuff. Yeah, those are good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, because I mean, there wasn't like we weren't like overwhelmed with Green Lantern stuff in this story. Because I mean, the Hawk people basically, mm -hmm. Adam Strange and the Hawk people got their time to shine in this. Yeah, and I. I'm going to go some deep nerdery here. You're going to have to correct me if I'm <gasps> wrong. I'm not used to that. I mean... <laughs> Shayera Hall was the Silver Age Hawk woman, mm -hmm. or Hawk girl, that were Thanagar spies that came out during Crisis. Is that right? Or Invasion? I think it might have been happened. invasion because it's like I think it's like we, you had like Hawk Silver Age Hawkman and Hawk Woman after Crisis, the history was so changed where it's basically like because you had Hawk World. Yeah, when you get to Hawk World, everybody's like, like, oh yeah, these were Thanagarian spies or something. Yeah, yeah. So they kill her off kind of unceremoniously, you know, just hmm. kind of tidy up that little bit of continuity that nobody will ever remember and mention again. <laughs> Well, well, I mean, there was such a bloody mess, you know, just with uh, hawk, hawk men and hawk girls and hawk women. And just that's why Jeff Johns just went to the reincarnation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and actually his uh, hawk man book that he wrote, um, but, yeah, I think they the, it was, you know, kind of termed Conan the librarian because you had hawk man being kind of a barbarian, you know, but he's, he has all this knowledge, right? <laughs> I mean, he's basically, he's basically Conan with wings. I mean, he's a bear, he's a bear yeah. chest that almost looks like a... Uh, yeah, barbarian with them swinging a mace or whatever. Yeah, great series, great art. Uh, was it Rags Morales that did the art on that? I'd have to look it up to be sure, but that, that was a really, up. really good series. Mm -hmm. Now, did that come? I'm trying to remember. Did it was was it out and running before Infinite Crisis? Oh, I can't remember. Uh... Let me see. Uh, because I know it took. Uh, what was it like after JSA twenty five or whatever? Is that isn't that when they started that? Maybe. I think. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Because it later turned into Hot Girl. I think yeah. the series did. Because um, wasn't it like one year? Was it one year later or, or something? Where it's like, yeah, like doesn't he go missing or something? I think so. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is but if yeah, this is before Infinite Crisis because it's saying uh May two thousand two I think it started so. Oh okay. Yeah so. Yeah, because I think it goes forty nine. You know, Hawkman for forty nine issues, then it turns to Hawk Girl. Yeah. Mm hmm. It looks like that there is a collections of it, an omnibus. That was a good series. It's a really good series. Uh oh yeah, and they were saying, you know, Hawkman was even though Hawkman was had been around since the nineteen forties, that two thousand two was the first time he got his own ongoing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So yeah, when that was that yeah. was a that was a really good series. And it was Matt Rags Morales. Wow, I actually remembered that. That is kind of scary. Yeah, because I went forty nine issues and then <laughs> From fifty from fifty to sixty six, it went to Hawk Girl uh, because uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, because with Hawk Girl, because I guess he went missing or something. Oh, and I have to. So Blackest Night <laughs> is good, right? 
Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it was John's or editorial. I don't know who came up with the idea. But to resurrect canceled series. <gasps> oh, um, yeah. <laughs> you had a Catwoman issue because, you know, canceled series, they come back. They're zombies. They're going on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like it was a Catwoman, a Starman. Uh, uh -huh. um, I think, was there a Hawk Girl? There might have been. Uh... Let me see. Let's see if I find it. Oh, but you know, it was interesting. Uh, they were talking to the Flash showrunner, Eric Wallace, and he was saying something like it, if the Flash had gotten a season 10, they were going to try to do like their own version of Blackest Night. And I'm like, how would that have worked without a Green Lantern? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that. Uh, I think okay. I think they said it might have been like a crossover thing and it might have had like Stargirl and stuff. And But I'm just like, but no. But how do you do it without a Green Lantern? I mean, right? unless, they, unless they brought in Alan Scott or, so, or Jade or something, but I'm just like, oh. Uh, let's see. I'm looking. Let's see. Uh, Adventure Comics. They brought back Adventure oh, Comics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Adventure Comics. Um, Suicide Squad. Hmm. That makes com complete sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Starman, The Question, Catwoman. Oh, yeah, The Question. Yeah, Catwoman. Um, Adventure Comics 7. No, Adventure Comics may have been running at the time. So, uh, Power of Shazam. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Weird Western Tales number 71. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait. The Phantom Stranger? Maybe? Yeah, the Adam and Hawkman 46. <laughs> that had been canceled a long time ago. <laughs> Phantom Stranger number 42. Yeah. Weird, uh, weird wow. Western Tales 71. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. I completely... Yeah, I just think that that was that was a stroke of brilliance right there. You know, we're going to resurrect some series, bring them back from the dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, that thing was... Yeah. Oh, we're going to get the uh, Blackest Night kids. That's going to be like a month-long thing, right? I mean, we've got all those crossover limited three-issue series. We've got all the crossovers. We've got the issues themselves. Plus Green Lantern. I, know, Green that's Lantern. I, I mean, it's it's probably gonna be more than a month because I think I have uh, a, just a bunch like the Green Lantern issues and the and the, like the regular main series on there, and that might be at least a month. And I don't think I even have any of those uh, three issue mini series. So if we cover those all, it's it's gonna probably be at least two months. <laughs> It'll be zombie fun, zombie full fun, right? <laughs> like I said, I think it starts around December this year. <laughs> Nice, very nice. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just like you said, like the Ron Thinegar War, it just seemed like a bunch of action, and you know, mm -hmm. did it have to? I mean, again, that, that was like the length of all of them, but did, did this have to be six issues? I don't think it did. I mean, really, it was just, oh, hey, we're gonna find them, they're gonna run and hide. Oh, hey, we're gonna find them, then they're gonna go run and hide. I mean. What did Sardis do? I don't know. Let's kill him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it's. I mean, the art was nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, and, and Dave Gibbons yeah. is going to be on board to write Green Lantern Corps Recharge, <laughs> I, I think, isn't he? Along with. Um... Oh, who's the other writer on that? Oh, crap. I cannot remember. I don't know, but we are going to do uh, Green Lantern Recharge next week. Nice. Let's so, see. Yeah. Well, I missed it. All right. <laughs> we will... But yeah, it's just like just like timing though. But two was this supposed to be? I know, like they did a bunch of miniseries surrounding Infinite Crisis. This was like the cosmic one. Was mm -hmm. this? Was this? I'm trying to remember when it started over at Marvel. Was it? Was this their answer to like Annihilation and stuff? You know, 
wasn't a lot annihilation around 2000 that's what i was thinking i was like it was it or maybe i think it was a maybe a little bit earlier oh maybe so well that's what i'm saying did they come up back you know after a year or two of that were they just like oh here's ours i don't know maybe um because it started out with all the Annihilation uh, mini, there was the Annihilation miniseries, mm. and then there were four or six of those, and then that led into the Annihilation main series, right? Mm-hmm. I know it, it was uh, the main Annihilation was in two thousand six and two thousand seven, mm. so October two thousand six, two thousand seven. But there were four issues before that, so this would have still been two thousand six when. The Annihilation crossover first started, I think. Because mm-hmm. I know, you know I, around this era, they were, they they were answering each other pretty, mm-hmm. you know, consistently. Because it was just a basically like, hey, oh wait, we kill off we kill off Batman, we kill off Captain America. Uh, hey, uh, Dick Grayson becomes Batman. Uh, hey, Bucky becomes Captain America. You know, it was <laughs> pretty. Oh no! And then when Jason Todd came came back, it's like, oh hey, Bucky came back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was interesting times in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Very interesting times. Early um, to mid, yeah. I, and, you know, as as much as, uh, as good as Annihilation was, I do have uh, an annoyance with it. I think the same annoyance that you have with it. <laughs> our, our boy getting taken out by Annihilus with, you know, his... Yeah. Yeah, that just not not cool. <laughs> oh, and did you notice? I forget if it was the last issue or not, but there was one issue I saw. Like they did um, that Starman that's in this story. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, we, Prince Graven. Yeah, I yeah. thought he. Who we didn't yeah. see too much, but uh, did you see like the like the the bracelets or bands he had? They they were very, they looked very similar to Quantum Bands. Did you notice? Uh, that? Yes, I did notice that. Yes, <laughs> and he had that staff right that he yes. was using too. Mm-hmm. And now this is not the Starman. I don't. He may have eventually showed up in the Starman series, you know, from the late nineties. Okay. But there was the blue-skinned Michael Starman. There yes. was the Starman that was the son of the original Starman, the older brother of the Starman that we got, you know, post uh, Zero Hour, I think, or mm-hmm. around Zero Hour, which is a really good series. Oh yeah. You know. Oh, yeah, we're going to need a Starman list, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a bunch of them. Because <laughs> we may be doing that in September, kids, for when Lilith goes on her vacation. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's what we said, right? <laughs> I think so, yeah, we were looking at that, or yeah. uh, I think we threw several things out there. But, yeah, there's a lot of Starman, a whole lot of Starman. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hell, hell, we could do a week of that. We could do a week of hot. What's with all these hawk people? <laughs> What's with all these star people? What's with all these hawk people? <laughs> what? What's with all these blue beetles? <laughs> oh yeah, we could do that too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, this—I mean, the story wasn't bad. But <clears throat> besides terraforming the planet, would the story have changed that much if we had taken Cal and Kilwag out of this story? I think you could have. You could have basically said that uh, uh, what's his name was just going to feed on the ship and he didn't have all those people there and then yeah. completely excise that whole subplot from it. And the story wouldn't really have changed much at all, except for the fact that Thanagar is now at a safe orbital distance and has people on it. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if that matters or doesn't matter or what, but. Because, you know, we never really see, it's just lots of fighting. We don't ever see how, you know, what are they fighting for? Who are they fighting for? It's just fight, 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 fight. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know, it almost seems like they were just like, oh, hey, the Green Lantern Corps is back. Hey, we have a cosmic story. Let's throw some Green Lanterns in here, you know, because there mm-hmm. should be Green Lanterns in every cosmic story. And two, let's remind people that the Corps is back. Yeah, and I, and I, I think that's a good thing. It's uh, yeah, and I've always I've always felt like the Green Lanterns never really got to participate in these big company wide crossovers. You know, the core. You know, because after Crisis, there was Zero Hour, 
Right. <laughs> and yeah, but it, it, it's like I, I, between Crisis and Zero Hour, I mean, the core is pretty old, pretty decimated too. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, this is the first one where they actually get to participate some. And then they get to participate some in Final Crisis. And then finally, they lead the crossover with, you know, post Sinestro Core War, we get the, the full unlaunch of Blackest Night, which is mm-hmm. the company wide that's because of the Green Lantern. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's cool to see him here, but, you know, did this, did this, was this series absolutely necessary? I mean, from a Green Lantern perspective, no, no. From a lead into Infinite Crisis, was it even necessary? I mean, you could have just summarized it in a few, you know. Oh yeah, this happened. Okay, you know. I mean, I don't know. I well, again, like I said, I think they wanted like a mini series set out in space, but I don't yeah. know. Maybe, maybe the whole Thanagar thing and Ron thing is someone's favorite. But I'm like, you could have just did a straight up Green Lantern series, though, too. Yeah. Now we will get Kyle showing up in a series uh, in Omega Men, like that's from within the last three or four years, I believe. Like yes, 2000 to 2019, somewhere in there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because like I said, I haven't read it yet, but I know Lil liked it. I have. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. I saw a review on YouTube of it that was yeah. really really positive so well before before even that we'll get a 12 issue ion series that too that's true written by who who is uh, wait uh, oh is it ron mars that's right that's right yes 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 friend of the show ron mars i i completely forgotten about that yes that now i'm looking even more forward to it this is ron mars you are listening to the capes and lunatics podcast yes because that's uh a lead into sinestro core war i think right I think so. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember, that's not like far away. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Like six episodes from now, yeah, we'll be starting eye on because yeah, I broke it up. But <laughs> should that be another excuse to contact Ron Morris again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we uh, we chatted with him about his, well, you know, kind of an overview of his run on Green Lantern, and then the final, you know, the final six issues. So. Yeah, which was a lot of fun, you know, and and having uh, Dan on as well. I mean, that was yeah. a, that was a really fun episode. Really fun episode. I mean, we, I mean, we've blogged them twice already, but I mean, yeah, I always like that when like your favorite creators, you know, they are nice, the ones that are nice people too. It's just like, oh. mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, absolutely, absolutely. <sighs> That's all I got, man. Okay, I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> I know. On Thanagar War, I know. All right. So, yes, like I said, next week we're going to do Green Lantern Core Recharge, the six issue mini. So, should be better. (laughs) It's going to be awesome. That's a great, that's a great series. And then in two weeks, we're going to do Infinite Crisis number one and Green Lantern seven and eight. So, (laughs) (laughs) So we're going to need to put in that Infinite Crisis Ran Thanagar War special. Well, the episode after that, we're going to do Infinite Crisis 2 through 7, which is the rest of the issues. Yeah, and the Ron Thanagar thing will be in the middle of that. So, All right, awesome. Cool. Yep. Very cool. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so, yeah, send us your thoughts. And, hey, if you can defend Ron Thanagar War, hey, send us a send us an email. Tell us how much you love it. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find uh, all things Capes and Lunatics uh, episodes, social media, merchandise, uh, the link to the Patreon. Please subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, the first uh, Heroes Reborn review by Lilith is up. We've reviewed the Fantastic Four Heroes Reborn, and uh, Lilith might surprise you with a thing or two. So, uh, yeah, so check it all out. Uh, Find it all at uh, tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. All right. And Mr. Will Allred, master. I tried to do your plugs last week. I probably didn't do you justice, but uh, it's all right. I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, you're, <laughs> I mean, the Kickstarter was successful, so we don't have to worry about that. But mm-hmm. yes, if people want to learn about all your works and your other podcast and anything else, where can they get a hold of you? 
You can find me at at Walred, that's at W-A-L-L-R-E-D, at Gmail and Twitter and Facebook and lots of other social media that I probably forgot. Um, if you want to find uh, my work, uh, I'm the writer for a book called Crossover Division, which just successfully funded a hardcover of the first four issues, which is pretty darn awesome and I'm really excited about. But if you want to check that out, you can check out CrossoverDivision.com. Uh, I've also written another book called Diary of Night. Uh, and if you want to check it out, you can check it out at diaryofnight.com. And Phil's not the only person that I annoy from a podcasting standpoint every week. Uh, that would also be uh, fellow writer Kevin Joseph. And together we hang out in a, on a podcast called Explain Yourself, where we bring on uh, crowdfunding creators, typically Kickstarter, uh, that, are doing co- that have comics Kickstarters, and have them promote their work and ha, explain themselves. Get it? Uh, and finally, you obviously have great taste, so that means you also love our boy Quasar, who we did mention earlier, who kind of got unceremoniously killed during Annihilation, but <sighs> whatever. If you want to find out more about Quasar, though, you can do that at the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. Hey, you boys, you look at the party? I love the party. <laughs> he goes limp in my grip. I'll put it in my navel. <laughs> Seems like I'm getting a package every other day. <laughs> all right so I yeah oh uh, i forget what Le- me and lil were talking about on one of our many episodes but she said something about explain yourself i said oh and i said a podcast but we're all read so there's your free, there's your free <laughs> <podcast>. nice <laughs> all right thank you for joining us again in one week green lantern core recharge one through six mm-hmm. uh, and then in two weeks we'll start fi- uh infinite crisis and hopefully it won't go on infinitely. <laughs> I was gonna say, Final Crisis was false advertising. Infinite Crisis, they told us exactly what's gonna what was gonna happen. I mean, just keep, exactly. keep getting crisis forever, kids. <laughs> lots and lots of crises. <laughs> the boy punched the wall, kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come back next time, and remember. Treat your neighbors well, kids. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to ran away. Good night. <laughs>